this is the first episode of converting this BW craft egg into a camper van. So today's plan is basically just get off all the ply lining that's on, see what condition is underneath it. We've got some hammerite paint if we need to touch up a few little areas, clear up a few little bits and just prepare this van ready for hitting it hard next week. First point to call is we're actually going to be still using the majority of all of this uh, ply lining except for this piece down here that's got a bit of a dent uh, just there we're going to replace that bit but with this being a budget build to show that everybody can do this absolutely anybody can we're actually going to do this on a really tight budget and get everything reused where possible we have to go around and with a sharpie mark all the panels to tell us what they are because when we get it all down it's going to be like, where did that piece go where did this piece go if you've got a sharpie you can write here so now that I know that that is the upper top thingy piece. Not only that, but because I can physically see that writing, I know that which side that piece actually goes on because that's the bit that's gonna be on the inside. Because we're gonna be using all of this, it might be worth just to get your marker and just do that. And then you know that when you put it back, those two lines have to match up. Do it a couple of times down the van, just so that you know you're gonna get it right when you go round to reinstalling. Can you believe someone's left me in charge? Oh, an electric screwdriver drill thingy. Top tip would be keep the screws safe. I'm gonna put them in this sink. Check this out. We got this sink from B&Q. We asked them, have you got any returns? Five pound. After around about 10 minutes of hard work, I make it look 10 minutes, it was actually around about 45 minutes. We managed to get every single panel off, including the wheel arches, which were a bit of a sticky situation. They were stuck on with loads of different things. But once we did that, I've got my cool little earth points up there so I can earth things to that if I need to. It's actually really, really clean. It's amazing what you find behind the back. I mean, I don't know what all this is. Drawers and things, don't know. You've got receipts. When was this? Let's have a look. Has it got a date on it? Please tell me there's a date on it. I can't see a date anywhere. But anyway, got a bit of rubbish to clear out down the bottom. But in general, it's actually a really, really clean, nice and straight van. The other side's just as in good quality as the rest of the van. I found another piece of paper with another date. The 23rd of the 12th. So basically near enough Christmas Eve. The day before Christmas Eve in 2021. So it's not that old. All the receipts seem to be for like garden centre equipment. So that maybe this was a gardening van. I'll have to uh, go over the top with checking for rust and s stuff like that. Just because if there has been a bit of moisture in here, got to keep it dry. There's not that much sound deadening in the van. Just bits there, a little bit over the back. So we're going to have great fun in sound deadening this. One thing we learned in our last van, sound deadening is really important. With having such a large van, I'd like the opportunity to be able to park in lay-by. Sound deadening makes that possible. One thing I've got to do is all these dangling cables for like the reversing camera and stuff, get them hidden up behind the back of that. And even all of these cables here, get them hidden behind the back of that as well, all the way up to the relay. We've got a T50 torque, one of them things, and that's to get these bits off. Because if I'm right, these bits are what hold this floor down. We kind of want to keep this floor because it is in good nick. It really is in good quality. We might just take the tool, the tie bar down, might just take that off and bolt it back in to keep this nice trim, just clean it up nicely, I don't know yet. Oh, Danielle will be back soon. I don't know whether she's gonna be happy or upset or start looking at it going and realize just how big of a job this actually is. Look at the quality of the flooring they've already put in. So they've got all the felt and all the trim and everything in, perfect. It's an actual official part with, oh, wow. And to top it off, it's tongue and groove. Yeah, I think it's a good shout to keep this floor in. It's pretty cool. That's why it was a bit tricky to get out. Let's get the next big piece out. Once the floor was out, it was quite grubby underneath it. Just general bits of dirt and grime. So we gave it a good clean out, a good hoover. We went over a few little spots with the hammerite paint, just bits that had been scuffed in the past that left bare metal work. And then we continued to reinstall the floor while sticking just a thin layer of insulation under there you think you don't need to insulate the floor too much because heat rises the heat doesn't go out the floor it goes out the roof more than anything this left a little bit of dust so we gave it all a good brush down and reinstalled the floor 
back to the Hammerite paint and we started dabbing it over all the side walls where the screws had gone in, where there'd been something just nick it and there was a tiny little bit of uh, bare metal showing. We sanded a few areas down that looked like they were just starting to get a little bit of surface rust and just constantly went through. Danielle gave us a good hand here. To be fair, that was a good hand because I was knackered. It was amazing how many little tiny bits of bare metal was actually shown on this. But this hard work right now is going to save the longevity of the van in the future. God, i got a hard job, haven't I? Well, she's busy over there and I've I pushed my luck a bit. I don't want to push no more. I'm going to get these handles off. It's just a standard T30 bolt in there and off they come. That'll do. So have a quick talk about how the layout's going to look. We're not finalised on the layout. On the back corner, side to side, that's where the bed's going to be. It's a big van. You don't know whether we're going to go double or king size. I'm fat. We'll see which way it goes. This side, up to the sliding door and maybe in front of the sliding door, the kitchenette area. This side, we're going to have a wardrobe up there. I don't know what we're going to put in that wardrobe, but we're going to put some wardrobe, a wardrobe up there. And this area, we don't know exactly what we're going to do. We've got all this area all the way down here and across there. The bulkhead will be coming out at a later date, but we don't, we can't really swivel the seats at the moment. It's very expensive for the swivel bases, and the passenger swivel base is like a seven month waiting list for it. We're on the waiting list, we'll see what happens, we've not got much time. She reckons an owl-shaped couch that pulls out into another bed. That's a great idea. I think a pole. The light's starting to fade, so it's making filming a bit, bit tricky in the winter. So, she wants to go to Ikea. Let's go. Good morning. It's the next day. We're taking the van down to get the coolant problem uh, sorted. That's going to be out for today. Hopefully, I'll get it back today. Then, Miss Danielle's picking me up, and we're going to Ikea. That is the biggest mistake I've ever made, taking a woman to Ikea. Uh, we're going to come out with some stuff that we don't even need. <laughs> Blimey, eh? Only just got to Ikea. They've already phoned me and said it's sorted. What was it? Just a tiny little perish on a little hose, and that was leaking the coolant. How bad do you think this is going to turn out? She's here, and Ikea. I'll be honest, it wasn't her that was the biggest pain in the butt here. It was me. I was sat there looking at kitchen worktops, at counters, at blinds, at taps, kitchen layouts, corner units that were quite fancy. Just loads of different bits and bobs, trying to get loads of ideas, including the handles for all the drawers. There's so many ideas at IKEA. Have you ever noticed anybody building a camper van always goes to IKEA? Even fancy little drainage boards. You name it, we found it at Ikea, and now I've got far too many ideas to choose from. This is how you know you've got a decent missus. We went into Ikea and we spent £12. That was it. Just 12 quid. A couple of knives and forks, a little bit of this and that. Nothing special. God, there's so much in there. Ooh, this van build's going to be a full-on Ikea van build. Got the van back. It was that little tiny hose that went from the bottom of the header tank that was actually split. Let's see. Tiniest little hole. That split doesn't go all the way through. The other side on the inside it's just a tiny little hole with all our fresh ideas we got back and started working on all the different designs and layouts that we could possibly choose from we found one that we're kind of okay with but we'll see how it turns out when it's built oh it's very very wet and windy outside so we've had to leave the wood inside but let's try and get the bulkhead out i've got the right t8 bolt for all the t8 nuts that are kicking around the only issue i've got is this piece here do i have to drill out those rivets and then take that bolt out, or can I just take that bolt out and, well, there you go. There's only one way to find out. Danielle's come to give us a hand. There's two more bolts in the top and then it's all coming out. Here's a little top tip for you. Stick in the comments how many bolts you think held this on and I'll let you know in a minute. But we've left one bolt or two bolts in each corner and then we've undone the rest. And then we slowly undo from the bottom up, last two on the top and then it's just gonna drop. Make sure to watch your toes, because when this drops, that's going to chop anything off. Oh, shit. Hello. That's a bit big. <laughs> <laughs> that's absolutely freaking amazing. Look at that. All the way through. Let's get in the front. Look, look, let's see. I can go. Hi, guys. So that's what we're left with after the bulkhead's removed. What can we do? Now I can see why people still use these bolt holes and basically bolt a bit of wood going up and over and down the other side. You've got a lot of exposed holes and down this side, loads of exposed wires. So we're gonna have to uh, play around and hide some bits and just have a bit of fun, really. How cool does that look? We can see right the way in. 
Got loads of room at the top here for a bit of overhead storage if we need to. Biking off there, a bit of overhead. Yeah. Excuse me for sounding like Chewbacca. 33 T8 bolts got that out. Now we have to go around with the rust protection, go inside all the screw holes that were already there and just get them touched up. We don't want any problem with them in the future. But with the light fading once again, I'm gonna leave you with that one. Next job, Max Air Fan, windows. I've got to cut big holes in the side of a 20,000 pound van. Oh, not looking forward to that.